Okay, I bet some people were wondering if I would ever respond to this video, and in this video, I will respond, obviously, and I will also tell you why it's taken me this long to respond. I would like to start by complimenting Parallax, actually. I think he's got a lot of potential. Unfortunately, based off the video he made against me, at least, there are some major things holding this guy back. For example, he makes numerous straw man arguments, he uses numerous personal insults, this comes off as a very malicious person, and I think he takes himself way too seriously. Here's some examples of that. He never cares and never will be. This is the reason why engaging with him in good faith is impossible. The only thing that I can do is make this video to address you, his fans, not him. Some of you may argue that making this video is exactly what he wants, but I beg to differ. I still want to hold on to the hope that perhaps some of you who are fans of his may change your minds and see him for what he is. Just a reactionary grifter. All he knows is how to weaponize the mob mentality and manipulate it to his benefit. More often than not, anti-SJWs like Discount Store Linguini are just as bad as the SJWs that they've mocked so much. And I wanted you to see that. He doesn't deserve any of you. Okay, there's a lot to unpack there, but let's start with what this video is exactly. It's not a good faith criticism video, certainly not. This dude is overtly saying that he will engage in bad faith, that he's trying to get my subscribers to basically unsubscribe from my channel because in his own words, I don't deserve any of you. And despite the lies that this guy's trying to spread about me, I've never tried to ruin someone's channel, unlike him. Throughout this video, he also constantly claims that I'm just trying to like own the S to the W's or something, when I never even use that sort of terminology. I've defended numerous artists on Twitter from harassment and some have even personally thanked me after. I've also just talked about bigotry in general on Twitter, which is unfortunately quite prevalent. I criticize corruption in companies, raise money for charity. Like we've raised almost $10,000 now for Give Kids the World. My community is freaking awesome. And if he's trying to say I just try to like own the S to the W's or whatever, well, what's he implying? Is he implying that just bigoted people, people that do bad things are S to the W's? Cause that certainly doesn't make me or my community look bad. One of the overall themes of his video as well is that I'm just some grifter or something, which is ironic because I don't ask people for money. And again, my community actually doesn't give me money. We raise money for charity. On the other hand, the first thing in his description is his Patreon. He makes community tab posts, shilling his Patreon, and on his Patreon itself, he even talks about how if you give him money, you will boost his morale. And hey, if you want to use Patreon, go for it. A lot of people do. But if you're the type of guy like Parallax that specifically makes hit pieces on people, and in my video case at least, I'm not going to comment on the other videos that he's made. I don't know about those. I know about the situation he's talked about with me. Well, it's a very dishonest, very malicious video. And the definition of a grifter is someone who makes money dishonestly and or swindles money from people. So he's making a dishonest hit piece on me, and he's asking people to pay him while he does it. So if you actually look at the facts, I'm not a grifter, and this guy actually fits the definition pretty dang well. This is the story of a reactionary grifter. He makes it big not by the virtues of being intelligent, but by manufacturing fake outrage for his fans, one after the other. His points may seem formidable on the outside, but once you knock its shell, you will realize that it's hollow on the inside. This is Discount Store Linguini. Like I mentioned, he likes to use personal insults as well. You'll notice he says Discount Store Linguini throughout his video over and over again. Most likely he's referencing this character from Ratatouille, so it seems like in some manner he's attempting to insult my appearance. It's like, okay, man, you can say whatever you want, but that doesn't look good on you. I don't make personal insults against people. You actually do. You engage in bad faith. You make overt hit pieces on people. You tell people to basically unsubscribe from other people's channels. Like, none of this looks good for you at all. Another main theme to his video, including in the title, is that I apparently manufacture outrage. The claim itself is absurd because there's so much outrage in the world. To suggest that I'm manufacturing outrage is ridiculous. I don't even cover the smallest fraction of all the outrage out there. Furthermore, I show the evidence of what I'm talking about in every video. Look, I will openly admit that at times, like on slow news days, I will pick low-hanging fruit from time to time, but that's not the same thing as manufacturing outrage. Just some topics are more important than others that I cover. He also claims that I probably don't know about responsibility, accountability, or consistency. Let's face it, he probably doesn't know a thing about responsibility, accountability, and consistency. It's sort of astonishing how personal he tries to make all of this. The fact is, he says he's 20, and I'm not a whole lot older than he is. I'm also not going to make like the same assumptions about him that he said about me. And I don't talk about my personal life often, if ever. And moving forward, I will share some things about my personal life in this video. Let's start here. I grew my channel while working at a restaurant, training BJJ and Muay Thai, and also going to college. Got hired there as a teenager and worked like almost every position, busboy, pack waiter, host, takeout, server. Not long ago, my channel was doing well enough that I dropped school and the restaurant work. 
I enjoyed the business classes I took in college, but stuff like the GE program seemed really daunting and to be frank, not something I wanted to put my time into. So when I found myself with this opportunity, I realized you know it was a fortunate thing and I wanted to utilize it to its fullest. Didn't want to waste it in other words. While there are still other avenues I pursue, I am very thankful for this opportunity, like I said, being able to make videos on topics that interest me and that people enjoy. There's not a day that goes by where I'm not thankful for that and for a community that's so freaking awesome. Like my videos aren't the fanciest around, but I do show up consistently with almost no days off no matter what. I've also got a mother who works very hard but has some serious medical expenses going on that I help her with. There's nobody else that can help her. And that is going to get into the next part of my response. Talking about why I'm responding now, like four months later. Nine months ago on March 5th, 2021, I made a video that was like 55 seconds long titled, I would like to address this. At the time, my uploads were not as consistent as they currently are. And I saw some comments wondering if I was getting burnout. And I didn't want to speak on this very much and I left it rather vague. But I mentioned my father's health and that it wasn't good and that he probably wouldn't be around much longer. Well, at the end of March, 2021, that same month, he passed away. This is not something I want to talk about and I'm only bringing it to the table now because I'm responding to this guy. And I thought about this a lot over the months, you know, thinking if I was going to respond to this or not. And I decided really, you know, there's two things I could do. I could respond and not mention this, but then I know afterwards I would probably have some regret in not giving you guys the full context. Like if I'm going to respond, I should probably respond in full. And yet if I do respond, I have to bring this up. So it's really like a rock and a hard place. Like I'm not throwing shade at anyone here, but I do see some people in the public space that openly talk about the loss that they've had. And I always see that and I'm like, man, I don't know how people can do it. I just, uh, it's just something I really don't feel comfortable talking about at all. And yet at the same time, perhaps that's my own weakness. Perhaps I shouldn't just uh, turn away from these things, be more upfront. You know, I don't know, man, it's, it's tough. I guess I'll just finish saying how it is. So at the beginning of 2020, he was diagnosed with brain cancer and they gave him two months to live. And as you know, he ended up lasting like a year. So full credit to him there, man. He fought hard and in my book, he won. He gave you two months, you last a year. That's impressive. But of course it was difficult. Like 2020 for most of the year actually, there was some good news. He would go in for his treatments. They would take the MRI, the scan and stuff. And they would say that the, the tumor is actually shrinking, like the treatment's working. And he was really confident that he would beat it. That's not to say there wasn't struggles in 2020, of course, dealing with this in general. It was, it was tough. And things like his walking and just his overall physique was lessening over the time. But when things really got worse, it was like right around the start of 2021, like right after the new year, things just started going downhill pretty quick. It wasn't just the scans getting worse and the tumor getting bigger and like spreading throughout his brain, but you know, it's, it's, it's the brain. So it's going to affect other things too, of course. So like his speech, he's, he just pretty much lost the ability to talk and communicate. And that's rough. That's freaking rough, man, to be there by your dad and to talk to him. And he can't say anything back. It was especially tough because I went through a similar thing with my grandma, uh, the, near the, near the end of her life. Excuse me. Like, I don't want to get into the whole nine yards here, man, but I've been dealing with loss for a while. I saw my grandma die in front of me and you know, I'm not looking for pity points here. I like to just kind of keep on working and doing my best. And I don't complain about these things. It's the first time I'm talking about it at all. And again, it's because I'm responding to some dude's hit piece against me and I want to give you guys the full context. Otherwise I don't think I would have said anything. The evidence of that is the fact that I have never brought this stuff up before, but I don't want to get too off topic here. Look, the long story short is with my father passing away at the end of March, I've been struggling to deal with that. So when this guy made a hit piece about me, I didn't want to respond to it. Heck, I didn't even want to watch it right away. I just wanted to get myself in a better spot mentally first. So let me lighten the mood a bit now because I'm responding, which I think you could presume that means I'm in a better spot now. And I am I've done a lot of reading, stepped up my training. I've basically done a lot of things over the months to make myself stronger in every way possible. And I'm feeling pretty good with where I'm at now. Of course, dealing with this sort of stuff, it sticks with you the rest of your life. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other things you can do to focus on the positive aspects of life as well. So moving forward, we will soon talk about the other main parts to his video, like the sections that he divided off. Before that, though, let me mention the comment that I left on his video. I know it rubs some people People the wrong way leaving a comment on the video before actually watching it but now you know why i did not watch it right away although that doesn't mean that leaving a comment was the right choice perhaps that was a mistake and i shouldn't have said anything to be fair though the things i said in that comment turned out to be pretty accurate for example i did predict that his video wasn't going to be a critique it wasn't a criticism video rather it was going to be a hit piece and it sure turned out to be one like just remember the things this dude has said openly operates in bad faith 
tells my subscribers that he's just trying to get them to understand that I shouldn't have any of your guys' support at all. And just to give a little more context as to how I could leave a comment like that before the video was even released, because that's what happened if you didn't know. He released the video as a premiere, meaning before the video is actually airing, there's like a countdown and a live chat available. So people on Twitter had told me about this video. I knew it was coming and I looked into this guy a little bit, saw the things that he was saying on Twitter about me already before the video was even released. And I came to the pretty accurate presumptions that I left in the comment in the comment section that we've been talking about. And on the topic of this guy's 23 minute hit piece video where he's trying to get my subscribers to unsubscribe, well, I find it very interesting and telling that even after this video has come out, this dude's still going off on his community tab and on Twitter, trying to smear me even more, sending personal insults at me and like calling me profane names. It's really immature stuff. So think about it. Dude makes a 23 minute hit piece and to his credit, there looks like there's a lot of editing in it. And apparently he records his audio like twice. He'll record it without the mask and then he'll like sync it up with the mask. So he puts a lot of work into this 23 minute video and yet he's still unhappy with the results. Well, that's because it failed. My subscribers did not unsubscribe. To be frank, there might've been a handful that did, but as you can see from the analytics, I've always been in the net positive. Every day since that video came out, I've been gaining subscribers. So that could only mean one thing. Even if some did unsubscribe, it was an extraordinarily tiny number. So big thanks to all my subscribers, including those that saw his video and decided not to unsubscribe. And if you did unsubscribe like he wanted you to, well, that's fine too. No worries, you do whatever you want. I don't want to stoop to his level of trying to command people to do things. And now apparently he's working on a video about me for 2022, ooh, he's not done yet. It is so blatantly obvious that this dude has major malice towards me. He's literally trying to damage me. Not a smart thing to do overall but just not a good look for him either. He's even tried to get other YouTubers to go after me. First of all, I've never made a video about what he's trying to tag me over here. And second of all, you never see me trying to get other YouTubers to go after him. I mean, that's just pathetic behavior. Okay, now let's talk about the specific parts in his video that he divided up. Political expression, persona non grata, a spiteful man-child, sanitizing content, and feeding the ego machine. Man, the titles this guy comes up with clever stuff. The first thing I should mention is that every example that he brought up in his video are things that occurred from a year ago to two years ago. Just like I predicted in the comment that I left, I said this was likely going to be stuff that was really old. He's included so much old stuff in his video that he even crept through over two years of tweets that I made. He went all the way back on my Twitter to November 29th, 2019 and included this clip of me where I was just having fun with my katana while my mom was over for Thanksgiving. I just gotta say, in my opinion, it's pretty creepy. And not just that, now that I've seen the video, he left out so much context, and in some of these situations, I responded to things, and he didn't even give you my responses. He's tried as hard as possible to make me look as bad as possible. So the first thing, political expression, this is a gigantic straw man. He literally makes up an entire argument and claims that I have that argument, when that's not even the case. We begin this video with one of the most common misconceptions a lot of people seem to have. It was this notion that anime has always been apolitical and wholesome. It is a medium that seems to give people a break from a constant propaganda and agenda of these virtue signaling SJWs on the internet. Unfortunately, that couldn't be further from the truth. People like this Gunstar Linguini would say that Miyazaki is a virtue signaling SJW. This guy claims that I say virtue signaling S to the W all the time, but in reality, I don't use that terminology. Like I literally don't talk like that. Now it feels a little weird commenting on this stuff because he's again using clips in his video of things that I said like a year or two ago. And I think I present myself and articulate myself much better now than I did then. Still, this point's a pretty simple one. So he should have understood it, but we're talking about a dude who will openly operate in bad faith. So I guess the straw man arguments are to be expected from him. By far the majority of the anime fans that I've seen online don't like when corrupt corporations like Funimation force in very biased partisan themes in the Japanese intellectual property that they license and distribute when said intellectual property never had such rhetoric in it to begin with. People like Discount Store Linguini fail to understand that the Japanese fundamentally operate the same way as the rest of the world. They're not a monolithic entity that possesses the same stance on their societal issues, including politics. I mean, they have their own hashtag 2 movement named the hashtag Kutu movement, but... Mentioning that would shatter his narrative that Western people wanted to force their way of life on the Japanese. Thing is, I don't say that. I've talked about the various political parties in Japan before, including the Japanese Communist Party. The fact is, however, the majority of people in Japan do lean in a direction that could be considered more conservative. That's a large reason why the LDP is the dominant party in Japan. Now, personally, I don't do political commentary and I don't like politics, so I don't talk about this stuff often, but I'm just clearing up his misinformation here. 
Furthermore, he acts like I ignore or don't know about certain societal issues Japan faces. This could not be further from the truth. For example, I extensively covered the Japanese feminist movement and even received thanks from a Japanese VTuber agency for my coverage when a feminist league targeted their VTuber over a collaboration with Chiba Prefecture Police to promote traffic safety. Moving on to the section of his video titled Persona Non Grata. You may have realized that I haven't touched upon any specific controversies that he got himself in with the VTuber community. And that's a good point. But I did this out of respect for the main people involved in this situation. The main consensus in the community seems to be that they don't want to explicitly bring the issue up again and harping upon it for too long. I can understand the reasoning behind it, but I believe that providing a bit more context on the issue is needed to explain his reactionary behavior. The vagueness of the points presented here would certainly leave him with a lot of room to weasel out from accountability, so it's better to be safe than sorry. I'll be leaving the references down in the description below. View it at your own discretion. I hope that this move doesn't overstep the community's boundaries, and I apologize in advance if I did. In this section, he talks about a situation that occurred back in January 2021, and conveniently provides as little context as possible. He even admits this, but tries to cover it up by linking to Reddit threads in the description, which also lack context and are extremely biased. So here's what actually happened. There were some posts on Twitter that people were making that gained traction, talking about this Ian VTuber apparently doxing Coco. I covered the situation talking about the tweets, and I did specifically say that this didn't seem like the VTuber actually doxed Coco. However, due to failures in my coverage, including the title itself, Many people still took this as the EN VTuber doxing Coco. I made a second video to clear it up, but the video was pretty trash and it only made the situation worse. So finally, I made a third video, and with that, the situation was cleared up. Also, to make it up to the EN VTuber, I went on to promote her channel multiple times, and she went from like 8,000 subscribers to over 20,000. I think there's like two things that played a part in why I failed so much in this situation. The first is that it all went down right around January 2021, which you now know is also when my dad's health really started declining fast. The second is that for like three months before this, I was extensively covering the terrible things Coco was going through from the aunties targeting her. That was the whole like CN. And Taiwan incidents. These things certainly had an effect on why I covered the topic so aggressively and the failures in my coverage. However, let me also say this. These are not excuses, just things that were going on. They did not completely like alter my mind or anything like that. It's not like I was freaking mind controlled. So I still 100% I still should have done better because regardless of whatever I had going on, I still chose that path and made those decisions. The responsibility lies entirely on me and I completely understand if there are people out there who never forgive me for it. Alrighty, moving on to his section titled A Spiteful Man Child. This one is much more simple. He's upset that I made a bunch of Uzaki videos when it was a trending topic. Sure, making that many Uzaki videos in such a short time could be seen as excessive, but it was a smart business decision and I still stand by it. If he wants to be upset that I utilize this topic so well, he can be my guest. You would think that after all of the videos calling out his obsession with Ozaki-chan, he can at least take a hint and go cover something else instead. But no. He's still making videos about her until today. I also just don't get his point here. So like two or three random people made videos telling me to stop making videos about Uzaki. Well, why should I listen to their commands? He also acts like all I talked about then was Uzaki. And while it was a trending topic that I covered a lot, I still covered other topics. And saying I still talk about her to this day is a bit of a reach. I make a video here and there, but it's extraordinarily few and far between. And again, so what? Why is he so pressed about that? Plus the overall amount of Uzaki videos that I've made is like 35 in a year and a half. But I've posted over 1400 videos on my channel. Channel. So they're really just a tiny fraction. He makes a video attacking two artists on Twitter for daring to draw Uzaki-chan differently. He also claims I attacked two artists on Twitter for their redraws. The thing is, I never attacked anyone. I gave my opinion on some artists who said they were improving Uzaki's design. People in Japan saw those tweets, they took umbrage with them, commented on them, and I reported on the overall situation. Although I will add that this is once again something that happened over a year ago that he brought up, and it's evident that I cover topics in a different way currently. You might say I'm a bit more chill now, or to some people perhaps even a bit boring. His other point here is once again a situation that occurred around that Uzaki timeline, basically like summer 2020, over a year ago. So he's talking about this situation with Maramara. Do any of you veterans remember the time when he jumped the gun and make a terrible response video against Maramara? Let's stop there because that's extremely disingenuous framing. The video was not a bad response video. It has over 300,000 views and over a 98% thumbs up ratio. Keep in mind that she was 14 at the time. He claims she's 14 years old, and I have no idea where he's getting her age from. Anyways, here's what happened. 
She made a video accusing me of a number of things, but what I really found grievous was her accusation that I don't understand why people dislike maps. Those are her exact words, except she didn't say maps. She said the actual word, you know, the one that gets people locked up in prison as they should be because they're like some of the worst people on the planet and even other people in prison hate them. I think you get the point. I'm trying to avoid that word because saying it might get this video restricted, which to me is very close to, if not implying that I support them. This is such a disgusting accusation. It should not be surprising that I might respond to it. The fact that Parallax is trying to use this against me is really odd actually. The next section of his video titled sanitizing content is actually pretty good. I agree with a lot that he says here about companies operating out of the US. Couple issues though real quick, he does seem to forget that companies tend to have things called target markets. He also tries to directly correlate how certain companies operate out of the US with Japanese anime studios, which isn't exactly a great comparison. The last part of his video titled feeding the ego machine starts with a clip of me talking about a handful of YouTubers who would send me hate on Twitter. The important distinction here is that I didn't start that. They sent hate in my direction and I had no interactions with those people beforehand. So I pointed out a couple of things, including that they tweet a whole lot, but don't produce content. Sort of funny that we would later see similar behavior from people in the V-tweeting community, and Mori herself would also make a song about such. That said, I'll criticize myself here. I came off a bit too aggressive in my opinion, Again, this is an old clip of me. I've been through a lot since then, and I've changed a lot too. The rest of this section, he continues to talk about owning the S to the W's, and stuff like that. Also funny how I never use that word, and he obsesses over it so much. To me, he also comes off like he takes himself way too seriously. Basically, in this entire video, he tried to make me look as bad as possible, and he tries to make himself look as good as possible by the end of it. Oh, he also talks about trying to get my subscribers to not support me and all that, but you've seen that stuff already. There is one more little thing though. A lot of misinformation and or lies in his comment section, but that is what it is. I'm used to that sort of thing. Like there's even a freaking hashtag on TikTok that's like hashtag hero hastelander. However, I will make an exception for woohoo lad because this guy has over 100k subscribers and he's completely lying about this. I never made an expose video on him. This guy was lying about me for like five to six months and sending hate my direction for the same period of time when I had never said a word to him. And eventually it got so bad that I finally decided to respond and apparently now he's trying to play the victim. I'll link that video in the description if you'd like to check it out. And go figure, Parallax hearts the comment without fact checking any of that. But hey, that's all I'm gonna say here. I don't want to get too off topic as we wrap this up. Maybe I'll respond to Wuhulad's comment more thoroughly in a separate video. But again, the video he's trying to lie about, I will link it in the description so you can check it out yourself. So that's really it. As I said in the beginning, I think Parallax has a lot of potential. He's got some awesome production quality, so it's unfortunate that he will waste his talent trying to make hit pieces on people like this. To me, the malice and spite he is dealing with is clear as day. I don't know what's going on in his life, but I do hope that he is able to move past it. As I said in my comment on his video, I have no ill will towards the guy. I don't want his subscribers to unsubscribe from him or anything like that. This is simply my response, and I wish Parallax all the best. So thank you for your understanding with how long it took me to respond to this, and thank you for tuning in, thank you for your support, and I look forward to catching you in the next one.